It's a big, noisy universe of stocks out there. Welcome to Goodbye or Goodbye. Our goal to help cut through that noise to navigate the best moves for your portfolio. Today, we're breaking down investing plays when looking at valuations. Let's bring back in Lou Bassanis, Public Ventures President and Chief Market Strategist. Good Hello to see you again. again. Long yeah, time. Exactly. So let's get straight to your buy here. It's yeah. the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, also known as, the, known as the IWM. We've already seen a pretty good climb here thus far this year. So let's get into it here. I mean, that's come after underperformance. Yeah, tremendous say. underperformance. I mean, do your own diligence here, but this is a great way to play the whole basket of small cap stocks. You saw on the chart there had a historic rebound off the October lows, is now trading in line with large cap since that time, which has been something that hasn't happened for a really long time. Uh, it's breaking out from that perspective. So both up from the bottoms, large cap, small caps about 25%. So dig into that a little bit more in terms of technically what you're seeing there, what it signals. Yeah, I'm usually a fundamentals first guy, but yeah, have to pay attention to the technicals. And when you look at it, all the technicals suggest that this price action is going to continue. So you've got the, the index itself trading above the 50 and 200 day moving averages. A lot of components in there are from the biotech space. So we're seeing a rebound in biotech that's getting captured here in IWM as well. Um, and then finally, just getting to how it's priced versus its history. And for that, we actually have a chart we want to look at yeah. that illustrates this a little bit further. So just to show people what we're looking at here, the S&P 500 PE is in purple. The Russell 2000 PE is in blue. And then these dotted lines represent their averages, They're long-term right? averages. And you see it's kind of like a gator's mouth opening up. And I'm a UF alum, so I'll just go with the gator <laughs> chomp. But what we see is a reversion to the mean here. So if you're looking to rotate out of expensive things and buy cheaper ones, small caps represent that. And if we look historically, Historically, when they've rallied the most coming off of these big dis disconnects, you've seen gains in excess of 100, 200, 300 percent in multi-year runs. So not guaranteeing or saying that's going to happen this time, but the setup's right. It's compelling. And a lot of people are, are starting to finally pay attention. Yeah, certainly we've talked to a lot of other investors who like uh, small caps for at this point in the economic cycle as well. Right. That said, it's not without risk. As you know, we always like to talk about what's the potential risk here. And it's that, you know, interest rates are not really coming down. Yeah, they haven't come down yet. So the, you said it, economic cycles have a big impact on small caps. So if we see some jobs data that convinces the Fed to hold rates higher for longer, or God forbid, actually inflation picks up again and reaccelerates, and the Fed thinks about raising rates again, that would put a damper on, on this rally for sure, because small caps tend to be the most sensitive to economic gotcha. changes. And do you have yeah. a position in small caps? I do have a, I personally have a position. Uh, family has a position. Our firm does not. We don't do any gotcha. banking for an ETF. So. All right, let's get uh, to your goodbye out of here. And this one is Reddit, which is really interesting. And this, this looks like a long-term chart, but it's not <laughs> because right. Reddit just went public, had a spike, but then has since come back down. So what's going on here? You don't think they're going to make any no, money? I mean, 19 years running and not a single profit. They got over $800 million in revenue. Look, when you buy any company, it's for the the future profit potential. And the, I don't believe there's any here. And the history proves that out. So I uh, got a long way to go to turn that corner. 90 million in losses in the last year on 804 million in, in revenue and tons of R&D spending. Now, it's interesting your next point here, because yeah. you, you point out that they don't hold any patents. Now, Reddit would probably argue and has argued that it's the community that they've built. Of course. That that's where the value is. When lies. you don't have patents, you talk about other things, right? <laughs> look over here, not at the patents. But if you look at Snap, what's forever doomed Snap from ever catching up to Meta is the fact that Snap never had real patents on their portfolio, whereas Meta has tremendous patent portfolio. And that's allowed Meta to rip off anything Snap innovates and implement it and they have a larger network. So Reddit suffers from the same fate. In fact, they're actually being challenged by Nokia on some of their IP that they may be infringing upon. Uh, they have one patent application. That's really not going to get them anywhere. So in my view, in our firm's view, you have to have the patents to own the marketplace, and they just don't have anything. Interesting. There. All right, and let's talk about the valuation as well. You say it's yeah. extremely overvalued, and let's compare it to some of the peers. You mentioned Snap a moment ago. So if you're looking at price-to-sales ratios, yeah. which if you're not making any money, you have to look at a price right. to sales ratio. Yeah. There's no earnings to compare yeah. earnings multiples. The only thing that would be more expensive here would be tr True Social and, and DJT. So we're looking here that Reddit is trading on par at like a nine times uh, price to sales ratio, which is on par with Meta. And there's worlds of differences. Three billion active users and under 100 million. 
wildly profitable, no profits. Even if you put it in a class, Pinterest is the most direct comparable. Uh, still can't stack up on any level from a price to sales, profitability, and average revenue per, per user. So I think Reddit is coming into a crowded space without very much to distinguish itself from the rest. Uh, well, let's talk about the one thing that Reddit has really talked about as its selling point here, besides the community thing yeah. that, that could be the potential fly in the ointment for your bear case. And that's the, you know, kind of selling their data to train AI. Yeah, look, I've been wrong before, so this could be the reason I would be wrong. A $60 million deal with Google for AI services, it's a fractional amount of revenue. But if everyone latches onto this, we saw this through the COVID days, it becomes a meme stock. Everyone gets behind it. They don't invest in the fundamentals. They invest in the hype. Uh, that's what could work against you here. Gotcha. And do you have any position in Reddit? No positions in Reddit. Okay, gotcha. So let's summarize what you are telling people, yeah. Lou. You're saying buy that iShares Russell 2000 ETF. Small caps, you say, are now trading as well as the large caps. They're fundamentally compelling, and even more gains could come if you look at history as well. On the other side, you say stay away from Reddit. It is extremely overvalued, has nearly no chance of ever, ever making any money, and you say it's doomed without patents. We'll see what happens. Lou, thank you so much. You. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And thank you so much for watching Goodbye or Goodbye. We'll be bringing you new episodes three times a week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern.